Welcome back to another in our series of great chapters in the Bible. Our chapter today comes from the Old Testament prophet Amos. Amos chapter 7, a dresser of sycamore trees. This is what the Lord God showed me. Behold, he was forming locusts when the latter growth was just beginning to sprout. And behold, it was the latter growth after the king's mowings. When they had finished eating the grass of the land, I said, O Lord God, please forgive. How can Jacob stand? He is so small. The Lord relented concerning this. It shall not be, said the Lord. This is what the Lord God showed me. Behold, the Lord God was calling for a judgment by fire, and it devoured the great deep and was eating up the land. Then I said, O Lord God, please cease. How can Jacob stand? He is so small. The Lord relented concerning this. This also shall not be, said the Lord God. This is what he showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, A plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah the priest of Bethel said to Jeroboam king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile, away from the, his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wife shall be a prostitute in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be divided up with a measuring line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land, and Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. A story is told of a man who is being interviewed for a possible job with a company. He brought his resume with him and handed it to the potential employer. The employer took the resume from the folder, read it, put it back in the folder, and handed it back to the man. He then said, I believe we have an opening here for someone with a resume like yours. The man replied, Oh, good. Where is it I'll be working? The employer replied, It's called the door. Please leave. That little bit of humor serves to illustrate that some resumes are better suited than others for job openings. Some employers can, in a single glance, tell if an applicant is suited for their company. They need not go through the task of laboriously poring over every detail. On the other end of the spectrum are those whose applications show them to be overqualified for a position. That, too, may indicate a red flag and a desperation attempt at employment. The Old Testament prophet Amos is among the favorites of many preachers. This book of prophecies doesn't just give us the usual future events that are about to befall Israel. I don't want to downplay them as the usual, but only to say these were typical of what God would show in the realm of prophecies. But it also gives a real sense of indicating what the conditions were in Israel at the time. Even more, we find in real time the reaction to Amos' message from God by the people. In our chapter today, Amos is accused by Amaziah the priest of Bethel of conspiring against Jeroboam. We read that in verse 10. Further, that Jeroboam will die by the sword and Israel will go into exile in verse 11. But also that the land is not able to bear it. The land is not able to bear it? 
Which land? I suppose the land of the wealthy, who according to Amos 3.15 were those who had both winter and summer houses and houses of ivory. I suppose it is those who became wealthy and could afford such houses by the way that Amos describes them in chapter 2. For three transgressions of Israel, and for four, I will not revoke the punishment, because they sell the righteous for silver, and the needy for a pair of sandals. Those who trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth, and turn aside the way of the afflicted. A man and his father go into the same girl, so that my holy name is profane. They lay themselves down beside every altar on garments taken in pledge, and in the house of their God they drink wine of those who have been fined. Or maybe... It's those described in chapter 4, in verse 1. Hear this word, you cows of Bashan, who are on the mountain of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say to your husbands, Bring that we may drink. Or maybe it's those described in chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. They hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor, and you exact taxes of grain from him, you have built houses of hewn stones, but you shall not dwell in them. And you have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions, and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and turn aside the needy in the gate. Or was it those in chapter 6, verses 3 through 6? O oh, you who put far away the day of disaster and bring near the seat of violence. Woe to those who lie on beds of ivory and stretch themselves out on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and, like David, invent for themselves instruments of music, who drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruins of Joseph. The land is not able to bear all your words, Amos? No, Amaziah. It is you and those who became wealthy on the backs of the poor and the needy who can't bear these words. Amaziah, you describe Bethel as the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. No, it is not the king's nor the kingdom's. It belongs to God. Yes, Amaziah heard all the words Amos spoke. And in true fashion, the one who sees his future threatened by those who would turn to God and put an end to the so-called good times. He finds a way to mock the messenger and mute the message. As if to imply that Amos was a man who preached for profit, Amaziah tells him to go make your money in Judah, but don't come here anymore. It is here that Amos plunks his resume down to Amaziah. Verses 14 and 15 of chapter 7, Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. In essence, I'm not from the school of prophets like those who followed Elijah and Elisha. I'm a farm boy. I was tending the flocks with the other shepherds in Tekoa. I don't have a degree from a university. I haven't been a following a rabbi or even been a priest. The Lord said, Go, and I went. Just like what Peter says in 2 Peter 1, 20-21, knowing first of all that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Or the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 1, verse 1, Long ago at many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But too often... People can't see the message for the messenger. In the first century, people responded to the message of uneducated common men and their teacher, a carpenter from an obscure Galilean village. One wonders if today we might do better to send a few common people without resumes or letters that follow their names to the seats of power around the world with a simple gospel message. Maybe it's time. What do you think? And Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow and look at another of the great chapters in the Bible.